If you have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 11. I had a printout, I had a, another devotion, and uh, yesterday I was preparing for tonight uh, because I had a funeral this morning over in Alma, and uh, man, the Lord told me twice, you know, he had to tell me twice, <laughs> uh, I need you to do something off script. Uh, so he told me to don't get an outline, open the word up and preach the word. And so that's what I'm going to do following the Holy Spirit. I do have a title, but I, don't, I do not have three points tonight. We're just going to go down through scripture. An on-time God. An on-time God. And we are familiar with the story, but if you like, I am. Uh, every time I pick up the Word of God, I see something different or something that I hadn't emphasized before. And there's a couple of things I believe that uh, we can see from this uh, wonderful, wonderful story. John chapter 11, verse 1, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, uh, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary who anointed the, anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent him to say, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. So see, a lot of what's going on here, uh, Jesus obviously spent time uh, with these three and with this family because the last words that you see in verse 3, uh, the, he whom you, lo you love is sick. And so there had to be a closeness there. And uh, Jesus, you know, I mean, he loved everybody, but it's just like with the disciples. You know, who, whom did he said the disciples whom Jesus loved? Well, it was John. Okay, so there was a special, and it wasn't, you know, like, you know, you know he, he had preference or he, you know, he was, you know, uh, uh, an unusual type of love like that. It just simply means uh, he probably hung around him more and uh, there were just a special bond. I think bond was the word I was trying to look for of there. Now, verse 4, and when Jesus heard that, <clears throat> he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So he just tells them right off the bat, listen, he, he's not, it's, it's not unto death. He's not going to die. And you think about that, uh, Jesus knew what was going on, but nobody else knew what was going on, all right? And all, you know, it's like today uh, at the funeral, I quoted Romans 8, 28, for all things work together for good to, tho to those that love God and those who are called according to his purpose, all right? All things work together for good. It's for our good, the two things I like to get out of that, our good and his glory, okay? And hold on to that thought because I'll bring that up here in just a little bit. Now, Jesus loved Martha <clears throat> and her sister Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Again, you almost see contradictory terms here. You would think if Jesus loved them that, that much, they would, he would leave right away and go there. Well, there's another thought, because we know this has happened, okay? Uh, he didn't have to go there to heal him. He didn't. Other times, to the servant, he just said, hey, go your way. Your servant is healed, okay? But yet, again, Jesus had a point in everything that he did. And a lot of this was all around the word faith, okay? Because there's sometimes in our lives that we think God is not working, but he really is working. And all we need to do, and, and again, God is not, God and Jesus, they're not illogical, but they don't fit in a box. We like to fit everything in a box. And God had a better purpose. God had a greater purpose in what he was doing. And Jesus, too, he stayed two more days, and I'm telling you, it was on purpose. All right? He had a point to make. He was stretching their faith. 
Then after this, verse 7, he said to the disciples, let's go to Judea again. And you know, uh, just where we are in the book of John, there had been some trouble there. Uh, the scribes and the Pharisees hated him. Uh, the scribes and the Pharisees threatened Jesus. Okay, but Jesus again was purposely speaking to the disciples. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you. And are you going there again? And they are just saying, why? Jesus, you know what happened last time we were there. But here's the deal, folks. Jesus is Jesus, and nothing's going to happen before God's time. We should not be afraid. We should not question God, all right? We should put our faith and trust in Jesus, knowing that he knows best. Then verse 9, and Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? And he gives an illustration here. If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if when one walks at the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, after that, he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him. And again, what is he talking about light and darkness? He's saying that, that you know, even in the Gospels, they said Jesus is the light. And just because it is dark doesn't mean, you know, Jesus, you know, shouldn't go or uh, Jesus, you know, are you, are you sure about what you're doing? Okay. Jesus can see through walls when Jesus, uh, after his resurrection, you know, he, he walked through walls. So he was just simply saying, you, you guys are being logical. I, I know what time daylight is. I know what time night is. I know that a lot of people don't do anything because you have to understand there weren't street lights back then. Okay. And there sure wasn't led lights, but he was just simply saying, you guys don't see it, all right? You, you, you haven't figured out I'm going there for a reason and for a purpose. And then he gave him another assurance. Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him. And I think they really thought he was literally talking about sleepy, but he had a much bigger idea. Verse 12, then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. And again, they were talking about two different things. Verse 14, then Jesus said to them plainly, and again, I, I, I really, you know, sometimes I know Jesus was frustrated. He would be frustrated with Peter, you know, by the, some, some of the things that Peter said and some of the things that Peter did. And I think here, because that word plainly, sets that off for me, okay? And, and I've said this many times, folks. Uh, every word in the Bible means something. Every word, okay? Lazarus is dead. <laughs> Jesus finally got their attention. They weren't not getting it. They didn't, they didn't understand. They thought he was just sick and sleeping, and, and he just, Jesus plainly said, guys, he's dead. And can you imagine being in that circle right there? I mean, I bet it just floored the disciples. I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Believed is used in this chapter six times. Six times you see the word believe. And that's what Jesus was teaching the disciples. Because see, you know, I've heard people say this a lot. You know, unless I see it, you got to see it to believe. Well, folks, the spiritual world, you cannot see. And God is working even when we don't see it, when we don't understand it, God is still working. So he said, then Thomas, nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us uh, also go that we may die with him. And Thomas, you know, his name is Doubting Thomas, you know, but, but here, here, he, he was really, I, I think he was sincere in what he was saying. He was saying, hey, if we go there, we're going to die with you. But 
you just have to understand they were on two different wavelengths. Okay, they were. Look at verse 17. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been dead in the tomb for four days. And folks, <laughs> four days, you know, that's, that's what I call double-digit dead. <laughs> All right, there is no chance of you coming back in a normal situation after being dead for four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. So, uh, sure, some of the fellowship and, uh, you know, Jerusalem was, you know, the center of that, you know, the, the city in that place. And so, you know, they knew when Jesus came, uh, they knew Jesus was there. And uh, Jesus just was simply telling them basically, hey, I'm here. Verse 20, now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went, uh, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Martha, Several times, I think it's three times in Scripture when you see her, see Martha, she is sitting or listening to Jesus. You remember Mary? She was the one that, you know, Jesus was in the house and, you know, uh, they, they were preparing a dinner and Jesus was talking and, and Mary was in the kitchen and she was just cooking away and cooking away. And she just stops and says, Jesus, will you tell my sister to get in here? You remember what he said? You're, you're thinking of a, a certain thing, but she, Martha, is thinking of spiritual things, okay? And, and, and again, uh, Jesus is always teaching uh, everywhere he went. Now look at verse 21. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So what is she doing? She's put in a limitation. A limitation there. Basically, in an indirect way, she was saying, if you would have come when we asked you to come, this would not have happened. Now, it's not a direct quote, but there's some, you, you know, you can, you can see that in that. And then he said, but even now, I know whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And it shows you how uh, Martha felt. All right, she, she thought it through a little, and she just thought, you know, it's probably not too late. You know, if, if, I, if you say it's going to be okay, then it's going to be okay. And Jesus said unto her, your brother will rise again. He will rise again. And of course, you know, Jesus had taught, you know, in the Gospels, you know, about heaven and about you know, uh, the resurrection and about all that is going, that will go on there. So Martha was just simply saying, if you look at verse 24, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at that last day. So she was saying, I know eventually he's going, uh, you know, there's going to be a resurrection. But now it seems is all is lost. And one of my favorite scriptures in God's word. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. This is the fifth I am statement in the book of John. And he is simply saying, not only that I am the resurrection, I know that I will be the resurrection. I have that power. Uh, God uh, has given me that power. I have that Holy Spirit power in me. And, and there is always hope with Jesus Christ. It's never over, folks. I've been in hospital rooms where the doctor said, I, I know one case in particular when I first came, the, the guy had a massive heart attack. And I was in the, in the room with the family when the doctor came in and said he has a 2% chance of making it. And man, we just kept praying. We kept praying. We kept believing. And he got a little better the next day. And it took a long time. I mean, it took 
probably two weeks before the doctor would say, you know what, I think he's going to make it. But it's not the doctor's choice. It's not up to the doctor. And I believe in doctors. I believe in medicine. I really do. But I also believe in the healing power of Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life. See, they were talking about life and death situation. And folks, Jesus was acquainted with both. Jesus knew what his purpose was. Jesus, when he started his ministry, was walking towards the cross. He knew that one day he was going to die. But I am telling you, folks, we have hope beyond the grave because of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he, though he may die, he shall live. There's that word again, believes, trust, puts faith in me. Though he may die, he shall live. And today, I was over in Amelin. I did the funeral of Jerry Osborne two weeks ago. And uh, Frances uh, had Alzheimer's, and she's had it for several years. And uh, in all that, Jerry had passed away, and she had fallen. Uh, She'd broken her hip. Everything was doing good. Uh, she was in a rehab unit over in Alma. And the story they were telling me was the, the, the nurses got up that morning and just knew something was off that day. And so they called, you know, uh, uh, the family in. And they just thought, well, we'll just load her up in an ambulance and get her to the hospital and see what's going on. And she just passed away. And I'm telling you, folks, I believe they had been married 71 and a half years. 71 and a half years. And with Jerry gone, uh, uh, Debbie, uh, there's probably not a day or two in their whole life that they weren't together in marriage. And that bond that was with them, all right, I truly believe Francis knew, you know what, Jerry's in heaven. And I am going to go join him. Folks, it, was, it really wasn't a sad funeral or a sad deal about, that was going on. Okay? And my point in all this is, Jesus and God, they give life and they allow death. And in this case, I am telling you, matter of fact, that's what I said at the funeral. There's no doubt in my mind that it was God's will that she died, uh, you know, on Friday morning. And so we see here, and whoever believes in and lives, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Folks, we have to, you know, if, if the Lord tarries, we have to die the physical death, okay? And I, I really think more people are concerned about how they're going to die than if they're going to die. I mean, there's a 100% chance, folks, if you live long enough, you're going to die, all right? But just how is, is some concern. But even at that, folks, uh, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't be afraid of death, okay? Death is graduation day. Death, to a Christian, to me, will be one of the best days of your life. Because 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I love to quote this almost every funeral I ever do. I, I say this phrase. When they took their last breath here on earth, they took their first breath in heaven. So Jesus knew all that was going on. Jesus knew what he was going to do. And he was giving Martha a lesson. He was trying to say, Martha, you know, it, it looks like he's di died. It's been four days. But yet, God and Jesus can do anything. And she said to him, and I love this statement of faith, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into this world. Folks, that's the statement that P Peter made. You know, Peter, Peter made that uh, statement also earlier. Okay, so you can see God strengthening their faith. 
And that's why he, he picked out Peter, because he knew Peter was going to be, uh, you know, a, a big part of that first uh, Acts 2 New Testament church. And God was empowering him uh, to do that. Now look at verse 28. And when they had, she said these things, she went away and secretly called her, uh, Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and is calling you. And, you know, Mary, you know, just stood back. Obviously, Mary had maybe a little attitude about things. You know, she was kind of upset that that was going on and she had lost her brother. And it says in verse 29, as soon as she heard that, she arose and quickly came to him. Now, Jesus had not come into town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with him in the house and comforting her, when they saw Mary, rose up quickly and went out and followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then Mary came where Jesus was, and she saw him, fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had, had been there, here, my brother would not have died. Where, where did you hear that, that verse? <laughs> where did you hear that statement earlier? It came out of Martha. So they'd already been talking. They'd already done their thing together. All right? Uh, not, maybe not a blame game, but their faith was weak, folks. All right? They weren't being strong. And, and I know death really kind of messes people up sometimes. Uh, but folks, I'm just telling you, there is victory in death for the Christian. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said in, said in him, Lord, come and see. And the groan is, groaning is what I would call, uh, you know, grieving. Okay, grieving. Because, you know, Jesus was close uh, to this family. And, and there's the shortest scripture. In the word, Jesus wept. What does that tell you? Folks, Jesus had, I mean, he come down in human flesh, okay? Someone that he had stayed with, someone that he had loved, uh, seeing the two sisters just grieving and brokenhearted. He knows, he has compassion on us. He cares. He knows every tear that falls. He knows every pain that you have went through. He knows everything that you are going through. He knows every situation that you have been in life. And he cares for you and he loves you. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? You know what? There's always going to be skeptics. <laughs> I don't care where you go. There's going to be someone in the crowd saying, well, I thought he performed miracles. Why can't he do this one? Is he who he says he is? All right. And then verse 38, then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb, and it was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Man, I'm telling you, I, I really think when that happened, everybody just started looking at one another. <laughs> like, is he serious? Remember what he said earlier? He'd been dead. They said he'd been dead four days. Folks, they, don't, they did not have the embalming things. They had embalming, but not like we have it. Okay? I mean, a lot of it was, you know, being wrapped in cloth and with those spices. All right? And when, you're, when, when it's been four days, I'm telling you, I know the people looking around just thought, what in the world? And Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench, for he has been dead four days. Three times in this scripture, he, Jesus was reminded he's been dead for four days. Do you not know Jesus knew that was what was going on? And Jesus said unto her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, there's that word again, you would see the glory of God. Folks, God had a purpose in what he was doing. He had a purpose. Now let me ask you a question, a rhetorical question. Which is truly the, the bigger miracle? If Jesus would have healed him from the distance or if Jesus 
had raised the dead. Now, he could have done either one. Folks, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a witness that God, I, God can heal. Okay? I, I've been healed of cancer. I had the, there were three words there, and the last one was melanoma, which is a kind you don't want. I had to go through uh, two surgeries and two skin grafts. But I'm telling you, I was 30 years old, and I'm 65 years old now. And, you know, I, I, they check it out every now and then, and they just said, hey, it's not a thing. You know, your, your cancer's not, you know, in recession. Uh, your, your cancer's, I'm telling you, it's gone. So God can do anything he chooses to do. And he just saying, here's the key there. If you just believe. And a question I want to ask too is, how big is your faith? How strong is your faith? And I'm going to be honest with you folks, mine could be stronger. It really could. There are times I may not say a word, I may not voice something out loud, but I'm just thinking, man, I don't know about this. I really don't know about this. And again, he called... They call Thomas Doubting Thomas. But folks, part of growing in the Lord is strengthening your faith. Strengthening your faith. How do we strengthen our faith? By spending time with Jesus. Spending time with Jesus. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes. Notice. Two things about that. He said it again. Three times he said, it's so that you can see the glory. All right? Because when Jesus does what we know he's fixing to do, there is no explanation known to mankind other than God and Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit raised a dead man to lie. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes. Notice he did it also publicly. What did he do publicly? He prayed. He prayed. And folks, we need to pray in faith. We need to pray in confidence. We need to pray believing that God can do anything. He is a miracle God. And folks, I don't even think it's one of the things that you have to stand up and proclaim something. That's not what I'm saying. If God tells you to do it, you need to do that. But I'm talking about where you are praying when everybody else is giving up. You are praying in the middle of the night. You are praying earnestly, and you are praying consistently, and you are praying fervently. God answers those kinds of prayers. And Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I say this, that they will believe that you have sent me. There's the reason right there. All right, Jesus was telling him, again, remember the, what he said, I am the resurrection and the life. There are still people here that don't believe I am who I, who I say I am. But God, through God, through God, we are going to show your glory. They're going to see something they had never seen before. In verse 43, now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud, a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Boy, I'm telling you, I would have loved to have been there that day. I mean, you talk about shouting, you talking about excitement, you talk about, you know, the man that, went to Jesus and the disciples couldn't heal him. Help me, Jesus. Help me. My faith is small. Help me to believe. How, I, I honestly, thinking logically, I don't know how somebody that was there that day and saw that could not believe. I just don't know. I, that, that just doesn't register in my mind. And so we see what happened. Jesus calls him. <laughs> 
I read a commentary one time that said he called him by name because if it, he just said, come forth, there'd have been a bunch of folks coming out of those graves. All right, but he specifically said, Lazarus, come forth. And he who died came out bound hand and foot with the grave clothes, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. Boy, you talk about getting some heartbeats going fast. You talk about eyes bugging out of the top of your head. You know, when they seen Lazarus coming for us, I would have loved. And I, I, am, I am hoping that somehow we get to see that. You know, I'm talking about a, a screen that is, you know, 50 by 100. All right. And he just shows us, hey, remember when this happened? And it says, and Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Now, folks, there is nothing that God can't do. It appeared that God was not on time. It appeared that God, or, or excuse me, Jesus, it appeared that Jesus, you know, maybe not, you know, didn't care, you know, about Lazarus' death. It appeared to the disciples first, and then to the people who said, you know, he, he healed the blind man, but he can't do this. Is he really the Son of God? And I'm telling you, that day, they seen one of the greatest miracles, next to probably the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I mean, they saw a miracle of God. Folks, God is still in the miracle business. He is. And we need to pray pray. We need to not give up. We need to strengthen our faith. We need to proclaim our faith to others. We need to be the one encouraging those who have, have a small faith or those who are discouraged in the faith. Folks, there are people all over this town and all over this world that are discouraged in their faith. And man, we need to be that light in a dark world. We need to let people know Jesus is alive. Jesus is well. Jesus can do anything that Jesus wants to do. And then it's not part of the lesson, but then many of the Jews who had come to Mary had seen these things did believe on him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things. And you know what they said? We need to kill this dude. There's something wrong with him. We need to take his life. All right? They, they feared him because he spoke just wisdom. Jesus spoke wisdom. Jesus spoke against them. Jesus spoke about eternal life. Jesus spoke. And folks, the world needs to hear that. They need to see that we have a huge... I, that's what I want. I, I, I want, you know, uh, when people either go by my casket or remember me, I would love for him to say, man, he had a huge faith. Not just for my glory at all, not at all, but so others can believe and that we can be examples to other folks. Father, thank you for this day. And God, you're always on time. Man, you're never early. You're never late. And God, sometimes we try to get out ahead of you. Sometimes we lag behind you. But God, the key is the walking with you, walking beside you. Man, we're walking with the King of glory. We're walking with Jesus. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us with our faith. God, I pray that we would believe, that we would strengthen our faith. And God, I pray that we would encourage others to do the same. God, you can do anything. You can do everything. And God, I pray that we would have a strong faith and a strong testimony about what you have done in our own lives. God, you've worked miracles in our own lives. Salvation is a miracle. And God, I thank you that you have saved us. God, you have written our names in the Lamb Book of Life. God, you love us deeply. And God, I pray that we would just walk with you and shine for you. God, I pray we would reflect your glory. And when people ask us, why do you go to church so much? Why do you give? Why did that not bother you? God, I pray 
that it would throw open the door to a witnessing situation and we would tell them, let me tell you why. And God, I thank you for your word. God, this is not just a, a fairy, fairy tale story. God, it's what happened. It's what I believe with all my heart. And God, I thank you uh, that you uh, are the miracle God and that you love us, that you are personal with us, that you encourage us, and that you do things in our lives, and we just we, we don't acknowledge it. We, we, don't, we, we just let things like that pass by. So God, help us to strengthen our faith. And God, I pray our faith would just grow stronger and stronger and stronger. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.